Hello YouTube, today we're going to be talking about comparing two means statistically. Um, so if we have a data set and then we have averages or the means of two data sets and we want to compare them, if we want to compare them, we simply compare the means and we're going to figure out um, how are they different and in mathematics difference means subtraction so that's where this mu1 minus mu2 comes from when we compare two things. So some things you should know for terms that we're going to be dealing with. Um, so y1 bar is our sample mean for our first uh, sample set. And we have a second sample mean, which is denoted as y2 bar. And then we have our standard deviation. Notice how this is not sigma, this is s. Sigma would be representing the entire population. Since we're dealing with samples, we'll just use s. Um, and we have the standard deviation for the first sample and the standard deviation for the second sample, which is s2. And then we have our sample size, which would be n1 for the first sample, and our second sample size, which would be n2 for the second sample. Okay, so we're dealing with confidence intervals. We want to know how confident uh, the difference between the means are, like if they overlap, or how are they different. So here are some formulas. They may seem kind of daunting, but they're very similar for the confidence intervals when dealing with z values. Um, but now we're going to be using t distribution instead since we're dealing with uh, a different type of curve and smaller sample sizes in general. Um, so here are the two formulas. Now uh, SE is standard error and I wrote the standard error, error, error formula over there on the right side. Now I want to know where, to show you where that kind of comes from. Um, so standard error is just sample, or excuse me, standard deviation of the sample over the square root of the sample size. Now you can rewrite that as S squared over N and take the square root of the whole thing. So you simply add those two together to get your standard error when you're comparing the two means. Now you add them because, why, why would you add them? Why wouldn't you subtract them? It might kind of seem counterintuitive, but that actually makes sense because you're accumulating how far that spread of data accumulates in terms of error. Um, so kind of like the standard deviation of the population accumulates when you're comparing two different, when you're comparing the two means. So something we need to deal with um, when dealing with t-distribution, we need to know something called the degrees of freedom. Um, and this is a very complicated formula, it looks like. Um, but I'm going to give you a nice little tip here. You could use this shortcut much simpler. Uh, it's simply you add the two sample sizes and you subtract two. It's a shortcut method. It's simplified. Of course, it's not the exact. The exact method is on the left. But if you crunched for time, I'd recommend using this. Uh, second sh secondary shortcut method. So where that comes from simply is when we want degrees of freedom are, is denoted as our sample size minus 1, but since we have two samples we have n minus 1 plus n2 minus 1 and then you put those two together and you have your n1 n plus n2 minus 2. Okay, so let's jump into an example here. So say uh, we have an antibiotic we're testing and we have a control group. We pull 10 sample size for, for our sample from each, of the, from each, so we give 10 people the antibiotic and 10 people the control. We'll say this is an experiment on, um, so the experiment's for blood clotting in terms of seconds. So we get the standard, or excuse me, the uh, sample means to be 25 seconds and 23 seconds respectively, and the standard deviation is 10 and 8. So we want to conduct a 90% 90, 90 confidence interval for the difference between these two means. We want to see if there is a correlation or pattern here. So one thing we need to determine is our alpha, and that second one should say alpha over 2. Um, so our alpha pretty much means is that what we're not confident about. So we're dealing with, we're doing 10% of what we're not confident about, and alpha over 2 is simply half that, so 10 divided by 2 is 5 in decimal form. Um, so 10%, 5%. So now we need to determine our t values. So we need to do our t alpha over 2, but we need our degrees of freedom. So we're going to need, oh, what's that? Okay, there we go. Find the degrees of freedom by using this table, and I'll get into that real quick. So first we need to find our degrees of freedom, and I'm going to do both ways just to show you that uh, the shortcut method does work, sort of. Um, but we'll just do it just for the purposes. So standard error is um, sample... Well, there it is. So the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size, square it for both terms. Then you uh, raise it to the fourth power, divide that over uh, the, just pretty much using the formula there, and plug in the numbers, and you get 17.2. Now, since we're going to be using a table, 
Uh, there's For degrees of freedom are an integer, so they're whole numbers. They don't go by decimals. Um, so we'll round this down to 17 degrees of freedom. Now, one thing worth noting, you should generally round down to have a more conservative interval. So if, say, we got 17.7, .7, you still want to bring it down to 17. Um, this is just so you're a little bit more confident and conservative with your data. So now the shortcut method using that formula simply we had a sample size of 10 and for both so 10 plus 10 minus 2 is 18 so they're pretty close um, but I did say round down when we had decimal but the shortcut method does, gen does uh, produce a higher degree of freedom but we'll see how that affects the data in terms of our analysis in a moment. So now that we have our degrees of freedom is our 17 and 18 and we have our alpha over 2 at 0.05. Now we use our table here, and we look at the degrees of freedom, which are 17 and 18. We're going to use both for now. Um, and our probability, which are at the tails, if you notice the graph at the top, and we're dealing with the tails. And we're using our alpha over 2 value because this is symmetric. We're dealing with both sides. And we get our t alpha over 2 values to be 1.74 and 1.734. So let's go back here. Now that we have these values... So the degrees, uh, degree of freedom with 17 is 1.74, and with degree of freedom of 18 is 1.734. So now we simply use the formula to calculate our 90% confidence interval, so we'd subtract the means. Now one thing I do want to note, uh, how do you know which one's y1 and y2, or y bar 1 and y bar 2? Um, pretty much you get to choose. It doesn't really matter. You're doing the comparison. Generally people like to deal with, small, or with uh, positive numbers, so... I uh, use the um, y bar 1 to be the first column because 25 minus 23 will produce positive 2 rather than 23 minus 25 equals negative 2. Um, but it doesn't really matter. It's worth noting, though. So, because we're going to be adding and subtracting plus or minus the uh, confidence interval here. So, our t alpha over 2 value, we'll just use the degree of freedom with 17 and we'll have our 1.74 value, which we calculated. Then you simply use your standard error uh, which was given in this formula over here up top in the top right. So our sample size squared over the, our standard deviation squared over, okay, anyway, just the formula. So <laughs> um, that's our standard error. And we get this numerical value here. We continue to simplify and we get 2 plus or minus 9.9 .9 approximately. So we did the math. One thing I want to note is that notice how we used the degree of freedom was only off by like hundredths or thousandths place in decimal form between 17 and 18 um, for the t-values that produced. It wouldn't have a big effect for this data in specifics because we're dealing with whole numbers and not that really large of data or widespread. Um, so that's why it's okay to use that shortcut method uh, pretty much for this case. But I want to talk about what this uh, confidence interval means. What does 2 plus or minus 9.9 .9 mean? So we can make this an interval notation just to make things a little simpler to see. So we have negative 8 to 12. Again, what does this mean exactly? Well, let's go back to the data. What are we doing? So we have an antibiotic and a control group. So we're testing to see is there a difference in time for blood to clot. Um, if you have the antibiotic and if you don't. And what this interval tells us is that we're 90% confident that the clotting time uh, for the difference between those two means. So we're, by the difference, uh, there's a 90% chance that the difference lies between these values. Now we'll get into why that value is negative for this uh, uh, in a second. But one thing I want to note before we get into that is what would happen if the difference were zero. If our confidence interval... Uh, or excuse me, if our difference was zero, what would that mean? That means that the two samples have the same average, exactly the same, so that means the means are the same. Since this interval includes zero, goes negative eight, negative seven, negative six, negative five, negative four, three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, since zero is included, that means the means potentially could be the same. We don't know. We might, just depending on the sample we got, we could have got lucky or by chance or random or something, um, but this does include that interval. Now, say, um, there we go, that the means are the same. So, what if we had an interval that was, that we just, we made that 8 positive. Say there was the interval was between 8 to 12. 
we can definitely be sure then, since zero is not included, that these means definitely have a difference. There is a difference of between 8 to 12, and we would be 90% confident in that. So there is something going on there, and we statistically would be able to prove that if this interval was such. So, but since they are the same, since zero is, excuse me, since zero is included and they have the potential to be the same, we cannot make any just uh, causes or correlations. So, now dealing with this negative here. So, since it's pretty much saying mu2 is greater than mu1 um, with this negative value here, so that means we're saying that even though the control group had a smaller uh, average than the antibiotic average in terms of time, because this is negative, technically it could be 28 seconds instead of 23 seconds, and the antibiotic could still be at 25. Um, so the control group could actually have a longer time to uh, their blood to clot than the antibiotic, but just because of the sample that we got, it might be different. Now, what would this mean? The positive difference pretty much means that our first uh, mu is greater than our second. I should say y bar, um, but I'm just trying to denote the average here. But you get what I'm saying pretty much. So the negative suggests that the control group could actually have a larger mean. That's what I'm trying to get at here. So hope this helped in terms of trying to figure out how you can use confidence intervals and the difference between uh, your sample means when you're dealing with scientific studies such as seeing how the effects of a drug could work on a population if you're testing it. So this is an application of um, statistic analysis here and I hope this helped and good luck practicing.